What's going on guys? Welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Fate Reforged. I uh, actually really enjoyed this set. There's a lot of cool cards in it. Sitting at the top though, of course, we have Ugin the Spirit Dragon sitting at $60 on Card Kingdom. Uh, below that, at a big price reduction, uh, Monastery Mentor sitting right around 10 or 11 bucks. Uh, obviously, it was restricted in uh, Vintage, I believe, uh, and so or Legacy, one of the two. And so uh, it took a big price hit, but it's still a great card. Soulfire Grandmaster is sitting at $3, and below that, there's just not much value, unfortunately. But uh, obviously, Ugin is a great card, so we're kind of hoping to pull that. Uh, of course, we will go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. So we'll actually see uh, what our first round draft pick would be. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll get something really interesting. Obviously, uh, if you guys disagree with my draft pick, that's per perfectly fine. Just let me know in the comment section below what you think you would pick. Uh, I'm perfectly open to that. So we will go through every card in our first one here is Arishan Cleric. It is a 1-3 for 2, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life. I generally don't like cards like this. Uh, it's not very powerful for a 2-drop. It's a 1-3. Uh, it might live a little while, but it's just not doing very much. Uh, gaining 3 life doesn't do that much in limited either, so I just don't think that's a very good card. Uh, Abzan Advantage is a instant for 2, and target player sacrifices an enchantment, and you can bolster 1. Uh, bolster means you choose a creature and put plus one plus one counters on it basically uh, if it whatever bolster one in this case you would put just one on so uh, excuse me with the least toughness I should say uh, this it, sideboard I mean it's not great but it's decent sideboard uh, the bolster one is actually a nice little boost generally it would just be target player sacrifices and enchantment uh, it's interesting that it sacrifices and doesn't just say destroy target enchantment uh, but that does kind of leave your opponent some outs. I don't like this card very much, but again, sideboard, maybe. Uh, Avon Surveyor is a 2-2 for 5 uh, with flying, and when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Avon Surveyor, so it can be a 3-3, three, three, or return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, this card is actually pretty good, I would say. It's a little high-costed, but the flying is really, really nice, and it's lucrative. That's the important thing. Uh, when you need it to be, it can just be a 3-3 three, three flyer. But uh, if there's a, a board stall or there's something that you really kind of need to deal with uh, on the field on your opponent's side, you can actually just return it to uh, its owner's hand. So it's a really good tempo swing. Uh, I'm actually in the, in the running for that. Uh, Typhoid Rats is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black with Death Touch. Uh, classic rat card. These are actually pretty good and limited, to be honest, because they trade off with bigger things. Uh, Death Touch is at a premium, I would say, in, lim in a draft format. So... Uh, I like this card, not more than the Avon Surveyor, but it is pretty good. Uh, Ethereal Ambush is an instant for three, a green, and a blue, and you manifest the top two cards of your library. Uh, basically, you play them face down on the field as two two creatures. Uh, you can turn them face up at any time for their mana cost, uh, if it's a creature card. Um, I don't particularly like this card. I feel like for five mana, I'd get a, I'd want a little bit more than just two random two twos. Uh, but it does give you uh, some four power split up between two bodies, so it's going to be hopefully a two for one for a lot of people. Uh, but I, I don't think it's any better than Avon Surveyor, personally. I also don't like that it's two colors. Uh, generally, you're going to end up in more than one color, but uh, first picking something like this kind of pigeonholes you a little bit, so not a huge fan of that. Uh, Dragon Bell Monk is a two two for three with Vigilance and Prowess. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. I uh, actually really like this card as a filler white card. Uh, the only problem with it that I see is that Prowess uh, generally is going to be a little less likely to trigger in a limited format. Now, obviously, you would build around Prowess if you actually picked up a few of these cards uh, or some other like heavy-hitting Prowess cards, but... Uh, generally, they're just not quite as many instants and sorceries in decks, and so you're not going to actually run into this as often. Uh, so for that reason, I don't think this is an amazing card. Definitely not be better than the Surveyor. Uh, Tassiger's Cruelty, 5 and a black for a sorcery. You can delve it, which means you can uh, exile cards from your graveyard while casting this spell. Uh, and basically they add one, or they, they pay for one of the mana cost, one generic. So each opponent discards two cards. This is not amazing to me. I feel like you might play this as filler if you really needed to, but I just don't generally like it. Uh, Teamer Battle Rage, an instant for two. 
Uh, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. If you have Ferocious, that creature also gains Trample until the end of the turn. And Ferocious only happens if you have a creature with power 4 or greater. Uh, this is a fine battle trick, honestly. It's great and constructed uh, for you Death Shadow players out there, but uh, I definitely wouldn't first pick this. I don't think it's even that great uh, for a combat trick. I think it's fine, but not amazing. Uh, return to the Earth, 3 and a green for an instant. Dest destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. This is a very, very good uh, sideboard card. Uh, the reason being, it targets three different things, so artifacts, enchantments, and creatures with flying. Uh, so basically, there are going to be plenty of matchups where you will have a need for this. I could even consider main decking this just because of creatures with flying. Uh, generally, a deck will have one or two flyers no matter what. Uh, some decks are obviously built around it, blue-white flyers being the classic instance. Uh, and so generally you'll find a target for this. Uh, obviously it's not necessarily the best main board card, but sideboard, it's fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. Mardu Scout is a 3-1 for 2 red, and it has dash. Uh, so you can actually play this spell for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and then is returned uh, from the battlefield to the owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. This card is great. It's just a very little red aggro card, which is perfect. Uh, limited is fantastic for that. I don't know if it's better than the Surveyor, but I will put it to the side for now. Uh, Abzan Kinguard is a 3-3 three, three for 4. It has lifelink as long as you control a white or a black permanent. Uh, generally, by the way, this was a three-color format. I should kind of throw that out there. Uh, the cons and all that stuff, they, they're all three colors. And so uh, you actually generally ended up in at least two during the draft formats, if not more. Uh, and so you could probably make this a lifelinking 3-3 three, three pretty easily. I don't like it more than the Surveyor, though. The upside is higher on the Surveyor, I think. Uh, and honestly, a 3-3 three, three for four just isn't amazing. <coughs> Shifting Loyalties is a sorcery for five and a blue. Exchange control of two target permanents that share a card type. Uh, so two artifacts, two creatures, two enchantments, lands, planeswalkers, etc. Uh, I don't generally like these kinds of cards, to be honest. Uh, it's good in a position where you're losing, and it's really not good in a position where you are clearly dominating. Uh, so for that reason, I tend not to pick these. Uh, sometimes if your opponent has a really strong creature or something like that that you don't have a great way to deal with, this is kind of a good catch-all in sideboard. But generally speaking, I don't like it. Uh, Frostwalker is a 4-1 for 2. Uh, when it becomes the target of a spell or an ability, sacrifice it. Uh, this is actually pretty good for 2. It's going to be dealing a lot of damage pretty early. It does die very easily, but it's going to take something with it, uh, which I think is important. So I will put it to the side. Uh, and our rare is Outpost Siege. So 3 and a red for an enchantment. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, you choose either cons or dragons. If you chose cons at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library until the end of the turn, you may play that card. If you pick dragons, whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals one damage to target creature or player. So very powerful abilities. Uh, it is an enchantment on four. Uh, generally, you'd kind of want to do a little bit more in terms of uh, onboard presence, uh, creatures, that sort of a thing. Uh, but this is actually really good. It's a good engine card. Uh, it's a value engine at, at its best, I would say. Uh, I tend to think I would pick cons more than dragons, uh, to be honest, just so I can sort of make sure that I'm actually getting spells every turn and that kind of thing. Uh, it smooths out the draws very, very well. Um, I kind of like this card, honestly, better than what we have so far. Uh, we also have a Jungle Hollow, which is just a dual land. Uh, comes into play tapped, and then you gain one life as it comes into play. So these are kind of my options. Um, to be honest, I really like the Outpost Siege. I think I would give it a shot. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily the right pick just because, again, it might be a bit too slow. Uh, I don't actually remember. I know Dash kind of pushed this format a little bit into the aggro scene, uh, but I do, I'd be interested to try this. So for that reason, I think I say I would pick that. Uh, but I could definitely see picking some of these other cards. Uh, and obviously, if you disagree, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but if you like this video, please make sure to like it. Give us a little thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Uh, and of course, if you want to stay up to date on all of our content, please make sure to subscribe. We'd really appreciate that as well. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.